Morning TC family. How's everyone doing today? All right. Good, good. I want to invite you all to uh, stand to your feet as we get ready to enter the presence of the Lord. Um, I want to read with you guys Isaiah 25, verse 1. It says, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. How many can we say that we, we worship a great and faithful God? Amen. A God that, that not only ha has fulfilled promises in our life today, but still has more promises coming for us in the future as well. He's the same today as he was yesterday, as he's going to be tomorrow, the day after that, the years. I want to, I want to, uh, church, just invite you guys to come and worship the Lord. Um, just seek his presence, step into his presence and just give thanks for his mercy, for his grace, and for who he is and how much he loves us. Amen. So if you guys can please help me in welcoming our worship team, those who remain, as they lead us into the into worship. Amen. Are you guys ready to worship God this morning? It is such a beautiful morning here together. Amen. No. 
thank you, Jesus. Right there where you are, why don't you just give thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because you go before us, Father God. Because you go before us, Jesus. That you've even gone to win my war. You come back with the help of my enemy. You come back and you call it my victory.
This morning, I feel the Lord is calling us to make a declaration. And it's through these words. Hallelujah, you're my defender. So much better is your way. My wife and I asked her to join. We're going to do a couple of things here. But is that wrong? Have we not discovered in our 30, 100,000 years of marriage that we should have just listened to God in the first place? It sounds easy, doesn't it? But, you know, we're knuckleheads and we just try to do it our own way and then realize... God's way is so much better. <laughs> Could have cut so many things up. So this morning, I want to make that phrase a declaration. So I want you to join in with us. Yes, you can look at the screens. I'm not going to have you close your eyes because I want you to make this statement. Hallelujah, you have saved me. Number one, you have saved me from lots of things. Many of us would say you have saved me from myself, first of all. Amen. And secondarily, so much better is your way. Of the several things I want you to take with you this morning, I want you to take that phrase with you. So much better is your way. Now notice, notice, go ahead and flip the screen one more. Your way, show me that one there. Notice your way, notice what's there. Now you can't see it, I can see it better over here, you can't see it. On this screen it's done right. The Y is capital, because we're talking about God's way. Anytime you see a capital laid out in scripture on him, his, your truth, his word, when those capitals come out, you're saying, this God's talking. And so much better is your way. So join in this morning. We're going to make that declaration in song today. We're going to make that declaration of hope together. And we're going to make that declaration as a realization that it is much better then perhaps in a way we can consider. So Liz, help us out. Let's, let's go through this. And I want to hear you sing it out with all your strength and all your might this morning as we declare in one voice, so much better is your way. But number one, we're grateful that you have saved us. We're grateful that we're different because of what God did in our lives. We're new because of what God did in our lives. And this morning, maybe you find yourself in the in-between zone. Maybe you're not sure about all this of what's going on. Maybe you're kind of thinking and trying to conceptualize, well, what does faith mean to me? I want to invite you into the conversation this morning. I want to invite you into what God is doing here because guess what? He brought you here for a reason. He brought you here for a reason. And we want to invite you to embrace that reason. That reason is what? I don't know. I don't know. That's not for me. But you're here for a reason this morning. Join us in voice. Join us as we sing together. Come on, lift your voice together and sing hallelujah. Come on, let me hear you lift your voice. Saved me so much better. sing it out in your voice join our worship team and sing it out come on let me hear you yes yes come on let's proclaim it this morning
Father, we're grateful this morning that as we declare this truth in your presence, we honor the fact that you have saved us, you have called us, you have chosen us, and you love us that much. You defend us, Father. You stand in the place of those that would wish to destroy us, those that would wish to bring harm to us. You save us from that. You save us unto eternity this morning, Father. There is no mystery in you when it's connected to the depth and the width of your love for each and every one of us. So, Father, we are grateful this morning that we can come into this place worshiping and glorifying you. Father, in your son's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stay with me for just one more moment. I invited my wife. Yes, you can put your hands together. I invited my wife to come up. We'd like to pray for a couple, uh, some couples this morning. So I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask Daniel and Liz to join me up here. And I'm going to ask Boris and Cindy to join us up here. Well, we're not sure about the lights down there. So let's see. Take your time. Take your time. And Pete, if you would even continue to just play with us. We're going to stay standing because we have the unique situation that for the next couple of weeks, these couples are going to be a little scarce. <laughs> Almost at the same time. So come on, join us up here. Let me get rid of this. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're about to know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> come on over here, guys. We have to give men the time to navigate the stairs. You know, guys, it's a little bit hard to get up and down the stairs. Come on up, guys. Come into the light. Come into the light. Go ahead. And Pastor Cat, if you could join us too, I want you to help me lay hands on these beautiful ladies. So, a couple of weeks. Less than a week for you guys and a couple of weeks for you guys. What's going to happen? Did you get a new job or, you know, I mean... <laughs> Isn't this neat? A couple of weeks from now, we're going to have new members of TC. Come on now. <laughs> Within a week. And guys, I just have it on my heart because I don't know that I've had this opportunity very often. I want to pray for these incredible families in the making. First of all, we have four incredible people before us. But they're not just incredible of their gifts of what they give to the church. They're incredible because they're awesome people. And this morning... I think the best and most we can do is we're not going to see we'll, Liz is going to be gone a couple of weeks and Cindy and Boris going to be gone for a little bit, a week from now. But we want to send them with our blessing and our prayer. Um, I think I've met all the little, hey, what's this thing about guy and girl baby showers? Anyways, I've been going to a lot of these lately and they always ask, number one, what's, what's the biggest thing to tell them? And I tell them the same thing. Say goodbye to your sleep. You know, I mean, that's number one. <laughs> but you know, there are situations coming in which they need to know that their family is with them. And how many here, I want them to see this. How many in this sanctuary consider them family? Raise your hand. There you go. Yes. Yes. You can put your hands together because we can't see you all that well. So we want to pray for them. So I'm going to ask you guys to come up a little bit farther. They're acting all shy. There ain't no one shy person on this platform. Trust me, not one shy. But we want to bless you guys. We love you guys. We love you guys. If you need anything, call somebody else. Call my wife. No, no, no. I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. But uh, we know the journey that you're about to embark on is a little bit like, I don't know about this, you know. But I want you to know that when we talk about a transcendent, omnipresent God, we believe that our prayer this morning will be with you when your baby comes. And the Holy Spirit will be part of that experience with you. So guess what? You're not alone. You're not alone. And by the way, I do not hold any of our sisters responsible for what they tell you during the birthing process. They have a free pass. But by the way, you did do this to them. But keep the camera on them. I'm going to come down here to my mom, and we're going to ask her to pray. Stay there, mom. Stay there. Stay there. We're going to ask my mom to pray for these incredible families. Mama, it's great to have you back, mama. Wow. <laughs> Will you bless these amazing families in the making? Where it is terrifying what you're going to be going through. You hear all the stories from everybody else. Their experiences. Oh, my God, this. And oh, my God, that. Don't listen to any of that. You're unique. 
You are unique. Experiences are going to be yours and yours only. And God is with you. And at the moment that you're actually going through it, you thought, oh my God, what did I just do, you know? But that baby is going to be a blessing in your home. Danny remembers, my pastor Danny remembers, we had not had any children yet. And every time I'd get around a baby, he said I would start, honey, can we have our baby? <laughs> he would kindly ignore me for a while. Finally, he gave in. And, and so, Wola, here was number one. And they are a blessing in your home. You will give your life for those babies. Even when they cry all night with colic or when they poop all over the place. And they will do all of those things. But you forgive all things. And you forgive all things. And don't you dare touch my baby because he's my baby. And it's something... All of a sudden, guys, I hate to tell you, but you won't be number one for a while, okay? You may be about number two in there, so don't get offended. <laughs> it's for a good cause. But anyway, Father, this morning, I pray blessing over these two beautiful families, dear Father. Thank you for the gift of life that you're going to give them, those beautiful babies that are going to come. I pray, Father, there will be no, no, nothing will go wrong. They'll both have safe deliveries, very healthy babies. And, Father, those babies are going to be raised in your ways. Those babies, Father, are going to learn to love you, are going to learn to serve you, and they're going to be our next generation. And thank you for that, dear Father. So this morning, I pray a blessing over both couples. When their day comes to deliver, Father, you will be with them. You will guide them. You will hold their hand. And you're going to tell them all this pain is only momentarily because a blessing is coming. And that blessing of a beautiful child that's going to be in their homes, that's going to bring life, it's going to bring laughter, it's going to be a lot of love, dear Father, for the rest of their lives, dear Father. So this morning, I ask you to be with them, dear Father, that they will lack nothing dear father and their mommy and daddy will both be very healthy to raise these babies in your ways dear jesus honor you at all times dear father thank you for what you're going to do in their lives dear father may your name always be praised amen come on tc family let me let you hear you love on them just a little bit <laughs> Amen. You may be seated now. Thank you, worship team. Wow, wow, wow. Man, that feel good. That feel good. I don't want to say anything, but I think one is a male, one is a female, but I don't want to say nothing because I don't want to give it away. But, you know, this is a perfect segue into kind of completing our thought on an on-call generation. It, hopefully... A moment like what we just had reminds us that we have been called to build the next generation, to embrace the next generation, to, to kind of usher in that which God has set aside unto himself for the purpose that he has before them. And, you know, we've looked at some incredible examples. We've looked at some incredible personalities throughout Scripture. Now, certainly... We could have looked at many more, but the reality is we're just trying to make a statement here this morning and a statement here this month that says God is looking for an on-call generation. Now, we've shared with you some characteristics, some of which I'm going to add to today, but in reality, it goes really beyond that. It really goes into a purposeful calling, a purposeful reality that changes a person forever because what ends up happening is that they realize that they've been called for a purpose by a promise. Now, the promise comes after the purpose because you'll often say, I called and I chose you, right? All over Scripture, you have that pattern. God says, I've called you, I've chosen you unto myself. But invariably, there's always one more thing that comes. And the one more thing that comes up is always, and I will be with you. A promise and then oftentimes you get the many different ways in which that promise gets revealed and the many different ways in which that promise is laid out. 
on top of that, you're actually able to point back to that promise. And if you kind of want to get the beginning, uh, the end at the beginning, that's really what I want to try to talk to you about and convince you about this morning. That at the end of it all, you can point back to the promise that God gave you. A promise that he, that is unique to you and a promise that is just that motivating factor, that framework with which you can guide and live your life. So notice this, an uncalled generation isn't just said, okay, look at here, I've called you, I've chosen you, good luck, we'll see you later. But we started with Caleb, Caleb. we're going to use him today, some of them, but we're also going to talk about his daughter today, the next generation. Now notice this though, notice what's happening. You have this way in which there's a perpetual promise that's being passed down generation to generation to generation. And this morning, as we kind of tie a bow on our discussion on this on-call generation, it is us to realize that there's a promise that goes with an on-call generation. Notice it in this way. You've been called to make a difference. You've been called to do something, whatever that is. Now, I'm not talking about, and I, I do feel last night I kind of had it in my heart to share this with you. I'm not talking about only relocated to leaving and going, although that could be part of it. For some of you, uh, after Missions Month, some of you actually talked to us and said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Awesome. Cool. Sometimes, though, we think, well, you know what? It, it only means that. No, it doesn't only mean that. It means the now. It means the here and now. That which God has promised you now. Now, you can also point to scriptures that talk about God's promise to prosper you, God's promise to lead you, God's promise to never stand by you, or, or to, never, uh, to never not stand by you, I guess is the best way to say it. Isaiah records God saying, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Those are promises that as we walk away and say, okay, count me in. I'll be part of this on-call generation. Count me in. We realize it comes with a promise. So this morning, let's look at the life of Caleb and his family. But I kind of want to set it up uh, in a little bit different way. I want you to understand, before we get into the, the life of his daughter, who I'll, I'll introduce you in a morning, in, in just a moment this morning, I want to I remind you of the context. Remember what has happened. The promised land now is being occupied by Israel. So remember, what happened is you had the 12, spy, the 12 spies. We started our conversation at the beginning of the month with that. We have our 12 spies. Only two of them said we can do this, Joshua and Caleb. Now we're all these kind of years later. It's done, and now it's possessing the land. Here's what I want you to notice as we're talking. The land has not yet been completely conquered. This, all this narrative that we're going to talk about today is still happening in the midst of the need to possess the land. And yet there's a promise. So now you have 40 some years earlier before the, the note comes down from God that you're not going to possess the promised land because of your doubt. Now we kind of fast forward, if you will. And we're coming to the moment when it's time to go. Joshua's ready to go. Caleb and all the nations that are now being allowed to go into the promised land are coming in. But it doesn't mean that God's promises have wavered at all. As a matter of fact, we're going to see that they're coming true at every step of the way. So if you keep those things in mind, if you keep the idea that God's promises said, I'll see you through no matter what. Then the reality comes into place, well, then time isn't really that much of an issue. Why? Because God doesn't forget his promises. I want to say that again. God doesn't forget his promises. So as you're going to see right here, he doesn't mind when you remind him of that. Right? God, you promised me. You promised me this. God says, okay, yeah, I did. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's move forward in that. So really, we're seeing these fulfillments of promises in the lives of the different families that we're looking at, the different um, people that we're looking at. Now, here's the other part of it that I want you to see is kind of this whole setup. I know I'm taking a little bit, but I want to set it up. I want you to get where I'm going once I get there. The other part is this. It wasn't limited. Wasn't, the promise was not limited to Caleb. 
As a matter of fact, what we're going to read right now, it goes on to the generations, to the generations, to the generations. So notice this. Now, now we're going to read it. So go to Joshua. Bring up your phones, your tablets, your Bibles, whichever way you want to see it. I, wanna, I brought my Bible today, the paper one. So I wouldn't be talking out of my phone, and I wouldn't see what the REM score is. So that's why I did it this way. But notice this. We're going to go to chapter 14. We're going to spend the majority of our time, though, in chapter 15. So, but I want to set you up in this way. Notice, Hebron is given to Caleb or Caleb. Hebron is given to him here. But it's a remembrance of a promise. Let's pick it up in verse 9. Uh, let's see. Yes, verse 9. So on that day, Moses. So remember, we have a conversation happening between Caleb and, jo and Joshua. It says, on that day, Moses swore to me. Moses is long since gone. 40 years have passed. The whole thing has happened. The land, he said, and this is what he said. The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance. So notice, this is a promise that happened 40 years earlier. And it's a promise that's now coming to play. Let's continue on. And that of your children forever. So notice, it's not just him. He says, um, let me back it up. So he said, the land which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever. Why? Because you have followed the Lord God wholeheartedly. Let me continue on. I want to show you this in verse 10. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses while Israel moved into the desert. Look at what he says. He's kept me alive for 40, 45 years just while everybody was wandering around getting their business all put together. He said this, so here I am today. I haven't forgotten the promise God has given me. I haven't forgotten the promise. And you know what? Better than that, God has not forgot his promise. Uh, let, let's pick it up. He has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he uh, said this to Moses while Israel moved about the desert. So here I am today, 85 years old. This is an 85-year-old person that is saying my job is not done yet. Well, you say you're crazy. No, no, no. Read what he says here. 85 years old, explanation point. I just like that, that it's there. I am still strong today. Say it again. I am still strong today. God promises you that. We got to do a side note. Somebody told you you ain't worth nothing anymore. Say, you know what? I am still strong today. And if you feel like, say, get behind me, Satan. Say him something great like that, you know. Something kind of fun like that. I am, still strong to, I am still strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out and battle now as I was then. Whoo. 45 years have passed. He says, put me in, coach. Put me in. I am ready. I am still strong today as I was then. Now give me the hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard that then. That the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me at 85 years old, I will drive them out. Why? Because God gave him a promise. Did you hear that? God gave him a promise. So guess what was irrelevant? What became irrelevant in light of God's promise? Go ahead, shout it out to me. Yeah, there you go, Ralph. That, I just want to give you credit. I heard Sister Yvonne first, but I wanted to give you credit. Say it again, Ralph. What became irrelevant? That's right. Age doesn't matter. And I'm not just talking about your physical age. I'm talking about maybe your spiritual age. God can't use me. I've only been saved a year. No. God can't use me. I've only been saved a couple of years. No, that's not the promise. God said, I can use you. I chose you and I can use you. Notice what is happening here. Now, what I want you to see is this. This attitude is what he passed to the next generation. And this is where his daughter comes into play. Notice this. 
You got the hill country. You got all this happening. And now enters his daughter's story. That's in chapter 15, starting in verse around 18. Something like this. Not something exactly like this. <laughs> and notice this. We have in 15, 18, we have the daughter coming into the story. So here's what's going on. There's been battles. There's all these different things. And now we have a union of two incredible people. Two incredible young people that really God has incredible things for them. You're going to find later on uh, that this couple and, of course, the husband and the wife just used to do incredible, incredible things. But notice what I want to say is it is a promise that has come down through the generations. It's a promise in which somebody can grab hold of it and said, look, it made sense in my parents' life or in my mentor's life or in that significant person that believed in me life. It'll make sense for me. That promise that was given to them is a promise that is given to me. That's why we can stand up here and say, Templo Calvario, God is not done with us yet. That's why we can say it. And the ones that have gone before us will absolutely say the same thing. They'll say, go, go, take the city for Christ. God is looking for an on-call generation that will take the baton of the generation before them and say, I stand on the promise that God is going to be with me. And here we go. Let's do it. I don't care my age. I am still as good as I was then. Give it to me now. I can do it. Why? Because God promised me this. God promised me this. So notice here. I want to read it so I get all the names right. They're hard for me. So we're going to pick it up at verse 18 where we're introduced. So Caleb's had all his land. Everything's been parsed up. The battle has happened. Everything is good. Now it's time for his daughter to get married. Now as part of the tradition, of course, there's a dowry. There's a gift that is given to the marriage from the, the daughter's side. She does not have any right to it. It's a dowry. It's a gift. And notice where we pick it up here. When, uh, I, I'm going to work through the names. Give me a second. Give me a second. When Aksha married o Othnel. Ah, there you go. I've been practicing. Let me say that again. When Aska married Othnel, she urged him to ask her father for a field. As she got Don off her donkey, Caleb asked her, what's the matter? And she said, give me another gift. You have already given me the land or land in the Negev. Now please give me springs of water too. So Caleb gave her the upper and lower springs. Notice what's going on here. We have introduced the next generation in the form of Caleb's daughter, uh, Aksha. Aksha, did I say that right, Dad? I'm practicing. Thank you. Aska. No, I didn't say it right that time. <laughs> You know who I'm talking about here. Notice what's happening here. We're having this generational move in which she's taking hold of a promise that was given to her father that there's land. It's the promise that I just read. Moses, because of his faithful, because of Caleb's faithfulness to God and to Moses, Moses said the land where you're standing is going to be yours. But not just yours. It's going to go on generation to generation, to generation, to generation. We have recorded here that generational move, that generational blessing, that generational way in which God is faithful to his promise and to his word. So now we already have the next generation. So notice as, as we're beginning to kind of unpack this, this idea of an on-call generation that moves in the promises of God we begin to find out relevant things for our life. So there's three things I want you to take away. Three things with, with the time that we have left. Three things I want you to take away. Number one is this. Notice what happened here. Number one, you need to know your promise. Know your promise. And here's, here's how I want you to understand that. There's a promise that has been given to you and that is unique to you. Notice. 
She was given a plot of land, but she said, you know what? That's great. But there's more that needs to be done with that, and there's more that has been promised. And I need to ask. I need to make it known what I'm looking for. Now, what you, what you need to know about Negev. Negev is really just kind of a dry land, a valley of a dry land. Not worth a whole lot of anything without water. So notice what she does. She says, she knows my promise is coming, so I need water for my promise. So she says, let's go after it. Let's ask. Why? Because the land has been promised generation unto generation unto generation unto generation. Know your promise. Know what you're talking about. Now, some of us may be lost in that. Some of us may be, well, I don't know what my promise is. I'm asking you to go after it. I'm asking you to seek after God and ask after him and, and kind of know what he has for you in your life. Know your promise. Notice as we kind of continue to, it says this in, in Joshua 15, just before it. The Lord commanded Joshua to assign some of Judah's territory to Caleb. The, uh, Caleb. So Caleb was given the town of, in Hebron which was named after Anak's ancestor. Caleb drove out the three groups and, uh, of the Anakites. Now notice this, the descendants of all these different people. Remember, these are the very people that the ten spies said we cannot defeat. Caleb's going in there and he's living it out because he says, that's mine. That's mine. It's been promised to me. I know what my promise is and I'm going to go get it. And I'm going to go possess that promise. Well, that's being passed down into his daughter's life. Who's saying, look, I know what my promise is. It was a promise that was given to my father. And it's a promise that I'm going to move in. And a promise that I'm going to move through. And I'm going to ask for it. Now, one could argue very simply, well, what about that? How does it work? We're going to see that in just a minute. But Hebrews 10 also reminds us. Look at the good Hebrews 10. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. What's the promise he made there? That that land would be theirs generation to generation to generation to generation. Notice the way you have this promise that's being fulfilled in their life, which kind of takes us to number two. Look at, notice in this way. Number two, you need to define your promise. Here's what I mean by define your promise. Know your promise says there's something that has been given to me uniquely. Defining your promises, what do I need to live this out? Notice the way in which it's passed through generation to generation understanding, knowing your promise, but defining your promise. This is where we find promises that are unique to you, unique for you, and in a unique way help you to do that which God has called you to do. That which God has implanted into your very spirit, that which God has implanted into your very life, that which God has, has uniquely designed you for. I love when I have the opportunity to talk to people and say, God is calling me to this. And I have to say, move in that. Because with that calling is a promise. So notice, she knew there's not a lot I can do with that land unless there's water. Defining her promise, there's not a lot I can do unless there's water. I need to go get the water. I need to fulfill the promise that God has given me in that land. And they give. Notice, I mean, it just, it's just incredible how it encapsulates God's promise in our life. As we move forth generation to generation to generation. Ephesians 2.10 says this. You don't have to turn here there. But I want to read it to you. For we are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do Good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You have been created to do good works. You have been created to make a difference. And you have been given a promise. Your job is to define that promise. Take the time to figure it out. Take the time to say, God, I'm seeking after you. 
What do you have for me? What are you calling me to? What is that promise? What is that land? Notice the work here. We spent uh, uh, many years back, we spent a year talking about possessing your promised land. But notice, it didn't stop with going in. Notice all these different things that following generations had to do in order to possess the promised land. Why? Because they understood what their promise was and they understood that that was their promise and they had to go get it and they were uniquely suited to do so. You are uniquely designed to do good works. What good works? The good works that God has called you to do. Uniquely you. You have been decided. Now, yes, it's a collective. We as a group have been called to do something to make a difference. Absolutely. But also, you have been called uniquely, uniquely to make a difference in the kingdom of God. So number one, you need to know your promise. Number two, you need to define your promise. And number three, I need to see. Number three, you need to take your promise. I'm going to ask the worship team to join me up here. Number three, you need to take your promise. There's an action. This is what I want to leave you with. The sermon series are great, but they're not designed to be an end in themselves. So we're not asking you to consider being an on-call generation and say, good luck. You're never going to hear this again. No, we're asking you to be an on-call generation that is ready to take your promise and run. Now, what does taking your promise mean? Taking your promise means that even though things don't make a lot of sense, even though the calling doesn't make a lot of sense, the job that is before you, the task that is before you doesn't make a lot of sense, you are taking your promise and you're running towards it and saying, with God, I can do all things. That's taking your promise. That's possessing it. Now, in the nation of Israel, they had to go and actually battle. They had to go and actually make a difference. They had to go, excuse me. They had to actually go and battle for their promise. That was part of their taking their promise. This morning, I don't know what that means to you. This morning, I don't know how that is defined in your life and in your ministry. I'm just saying perhaps this morning it is time that you take your promise and move. Let me say that one more time. Take your promise and move. Don't let detractors take you away. Remember, with your calling, there's a promise. And maybe both have gotten a little fuzzy. It's time to take your promise. Notice what Caleb did. Notice what his daughter did. Notice what they've done all along. They said, you promised. God promised. You know what I like behind that statement? There's a certain audacity behind that statement. And the audacity is simply this. God gave me this promise. You're not going to take it away from me. You're not going to take it away. You say what? Sorry, last time I checked, you're not God. And God gave me this promise. And I'm taking hold of it. Go ahead, you want to do that. That's all right. Take your promise. And some of you, let's be honest, some of you got to look 40 years back to remember your promise. This morning, I want you to remember your promise and take hold of it again. This morning, I want you to remember those things that God planted in your life and in only your life. And move. Because guess what happens? Look what happened in the life of in, in Caleb's family. Look what happened in his family. He reminded Joshua, God gave that to me. The audacity is, Joshua, you're not going to take it from me. <laughs> God gave me that mountain, and I'm going to go do it. Notice what he said both times. I, we can do it. We can go battle. Young with vigor. I can go battle. I can go take that promise. It's mine. The end of that statement he says, with God's help, I can do it, right? 
45 years later, he's resolute to the same thing. I can go do that. Don't worry about my age because with God's help, it's going to happen. So don't let distance be a detractor this morning. Don't let time be a detractor this morning. It's time for you to take hold of your promise today. It's time for you to take hold of that which God has given you and is unique to you this morning. Know your promise. Define your promise. And take your promise this morning. God is looking for an on-call generation that will simply take him at his word. As I was reading up on this a little bit and kind of thinking about it, God has a perfect track record in this area. You know that? He has kept 100% of his promises. Perfect track record. So then why wouldn't we grab hold of his promise in our life? Why wouldn't we grab hold of the truth that he has given us this morning? Why wouldn't we grab hold of his promise that is unique to us? You know, it's really great when God says, I'm going to build the kingdom of God. That's really awesome, right? And we say yes and amen. And then when God says, we're going to build the kingdom of God through you, you think yes and amen. That's cool. And then God says, I'm going to build the kingdom of God through you in this way. And you know what? At that moment, he's talking to you. And that promise is for you. And he's putting his hand on your back and saying, and by the way, I'm going to be with you every step of the way. I promise you. Wait, wait, you can let that soak in. It's all right. It just excites me. Last night I did the same thing. I had to get up off my chair and boom. This I promise you this morning. I want you to think about that. What is your promise? What does it look like? Define it in your life. What does it look like? And what is holding you back from keeping it? Notice Israel had a 40-year detour because of doubt. This morning, is that what's happening in your life? Is doubt what's in your way? Has the negativity of what people have fed you about yourself getting in your way? God says, I can use you. I will be with you. I promise. Let's all stand together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just, um, I have something in my heart, guys. I, there's not a lot of rational reason or whatever kind of thing. I just have it in my heart since last night. So I need to ask Amy kind of a, a technical thing. Amy, can we turn on the altar lights down here? Can we turn this on? And guys, I just want to hang out with you at the altar. Is that okay? Those that would join me. I want you to think about everything that you've heard this morning. Everything that you've heard all month. And I just want you to come and allow God to speak to you today. I don't have anything more to say. It's time for God to talk to your life. It's time for God to talk to your heart. It's time for God to remind you of a 45-year-old promise. And hear you say, okay, let's do it. God is looking for an on-call generation that will take him at his word, live out his promise, and press forward. Worship team's going to sing. I'm going to ask you, come on up. Everyone that can, join me up here. Just because I want to hang out with you guys at the altar. I'm sorry, the camera's not going to like this. I should stay here. I will. Please join me up here. Just because in my heart, I want to be in the altar together with you. I want to spend time and I want God to speak to our heart together this morning. Come join, come join. Be a part of what God is doing, speaking to our life, speaking to our life. Hallelujah, Lord.
Family, thank you so much for joining us this um, this morning. I pray that this message today has been a, of a blessing to your lives. And I want to invite you all to just right where you are, just get in an attitude of prayer and just pray. As we hear today's message and we hear about how AXA actually had the boldness to ask her father for even more, knowing what that promised land was going to require of her and her family and her generations to come. She had the boldness to ask, to seek, and to request. And with that same attitude, I want to invite you all to just get in an attitude of prayer and make your request known to God. When you know your promise, you know what is required. And when you know what is required, you know what, it, what you should be asking for. So... I just want to go ahead and pray right now this morning. Father God, I want to pray over every single person that is connected today, Lord. Whatever the need is in every single one of these families and person and people here connected, Father God. The families represented through every single person connected here, Lord. I want to pray over them and ask you, Lord God, to provide for them for their promised land. And if they don't know their promises yet, Father God, I pray that this week... That this week, Father God, they, uh, that their promise becomes more clear. That whatever direction you're leading them towards, Father God, be more clear. That they know that the promised land also comes with the, with the tools required to walk in and also do great works, Father God. Thank you so much for this message this morning. Thank you for our pastors. Thank you for this message. I pray that it is a blessing to every single listener, listener this morning. Bless the families. Bless the houses, bless the finances, bless the health, and whatever the needs are, Father God, I pray that you be the provider, Lord God. Be the healer of every single person that is connected. Just whatever the, the request that is in every single person here this morning, that you be right there, Father God, answering the prayers, Lord God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for the next generation. I pray over the parents of, of the people connected here and the parents connected here this morning, Lord, that they may stand up in boldness and encourage Father God, that they stand up in boldness to just take on the responsibility to lead that next generation, to pray over that next generation, Lord. Lord, I've seen you do it in my life. I've seen you do it in my life. I I'm here, Father God, as an answered prayer for, for a praying mother. And now I'm here, Lord God. I've seen what you've done in my life. And through that, and as my testimony, Father God, I want to pray over every praying mother, every, over every praying father, and over every next generation that is still to come, Lord God. And I want to lift them up to you, Lord, and ask you that you do your will in their lives, Lord God that you bring the next generation even closer and closer to you. Father God, thank you. This we ask you in Jesus' name, the name above all names. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Family, thank you so much for joining us. I want to encourage you that if this message was... Um, if this message has been a blessing in your life this morning that you share with others, that you share on your social medias, that you share the link so that we can make sure to reach as many hearts as possible, as many families as possible, so that they too can receive this word and be blessed by it. I want to thank you for being here with us and want to and want, um, want you to know that we read your messages, that we read your comments, and if you have any prayers, feel free to drop it on the comment box below this video so that we can go ahead and add you to our prayers um, as a church, so that as a church we can pray for you 
for your family and for whatever your need is. Thank you so much, family, for joining us. God bless you, and we'll take it back to um, the sermon this morning. That you gave me and uniquely me. And Father, I turn my back on those that are trying to make me doubt your promise for me. Hallelujah. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Just for a moment, one moment more, just say thank you, Jesus. In your own words, in your own words. Hallelujah, in your own words. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you join in with the worship team and sing this declaration together? The declaration we started with. Sing it together. better 
Father, this morning I put a seal on this. I put a seal on this moment. I put a seal on this anointing and say, Father, that which has been spoken here this morning into each and every heart, my Lord, let it be so. Let it be so. In your anointing, in your power, in your authority, my Lord. We don't tie a bow on your anointing. Maybe this moment. But Father, we move in that anointing. We move in that promise that you have given us. Hallelujah. To you be all the honor, the glory, and the praise forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. Can we give the Lord a mighty hand clap offering in his house? Amen. Say praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good message for all of us. Stuff to remember and stuff to apply. It'll happen. You may be seated this morning. I just want to remind you that Thanksgiving is coming and we do something very special in this church. We give the Lord a special offering. The Sunday before, which is I think the 21st of November, I'm, a, I'm going to pick up that special offering. And I have in my mind, I don't know why, those of you that are in line as well, please watch. I want to ask 70 people to give $1,000. I just have that faith, that trust, and we're going to do it in the name of the Lord. So uh, prepare your money. Uh, you know that the Bible says that we have not because we ask not. Well, I do ask. I'm a good pediche person. I am good at asking. Every time his finances, guess what? I'm the one that has to do it. But I, I enjoy doing it because I know what it does to you. It changes you. It transforms you. It makes up you be a new creature that now knows how to give to God and God blesses that money. So you're going to give because there is a need. And you're going to give because it's God that has asked us to do it. We're not going to do it because we're told to do it or because we have to do it. We do it because we want to do it. So let's do it and let's honor the Lord. As we give, Proverbs 3 says, honor the Lord with all your goodies. Everything you've got, honor the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning for tithes and offerings that your people give. Some of them, some of them they give every Sunday, some every two weeks, some every month. But Lord, bless that giving this morning. Let, let it take care of the needs of the church and that the church can be a blessing to this community and to people around the world. So, Lord God, bless the tithes and bless the people that will give in obedience this morning. We do it to honor you, Lord God, and to praise you. Prepare the offering, Lord God, that will be given in uh, November. Let it be a blessing to you and to those that are going to be the recipients of that money. In the name of Jesus, we pray all these things and we give you praise for that, Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you. And who's going to do the Levi? This is M Mr. Levi now. It's Mr. Well, it's so good to be back. I was gone for a few weeks. Got married and did all that fun stuff. So but here we are. Here we are. God bless each and every single one of you. What an amazing service so far. What a great message, Pastor. Thank you. And what a way just to, to, to launch into, into the rest of the year with uh, knowing, receiving, and believing in God's promises for each and every single one of our lives. A uh, few announcements. Um, prayer night is every Friday. Never stop praying, which is First Thessalonians uh, five seventeen. There are so many needs and so many things that are going on in this world, and people are sick and people need healing. Well, there is prayer every Friday at seven p.m. in the upper room. So, if you're available and you're able to join us, please do every Friday seven p.m. in the upper room. Join us for prayer as we pray for uh, the church, the people in the church, the people in the community, our world and our nation and everything that's going on in that. So don't, uh, don't forget every Friday night in the upper room. Harvest Festival is tonight. For, yeah, let's give it up for the Harvest Festival. It's a good thing. It's a good thing doing something uh, on such a dark night but being the light in this community. 
And that's from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. tonight. So definitely come on out. Um, it is a community event. Um, we want to bring people from the community. So um, if you're out there, just invite people, take a flyer, let them know where we're at. We want to get as many people out here as we can to serve the community. Of course, there'll be food for the children and, and games and candy and all that stuff. So don't miss out tonight. Bring everybody, bring the whole family, and bring some neighbors as well. Um, ladies, any ladies in the house this morning? All right, a few of you. Any more ladies? Any other ladies in the house? Hey, well, they're going to be having, a, the women's ministry is going to be having a, a luncheon. Um, it's going to be a day together on November 6th at 12 p.m., and that's going to be at the Knott's Berry Farm Hotel. It'll be a great time. Um, there's a table out in the lobby, so visit them, get signed up, get registered. Uh, you don't want to miss out for a great time of uh, hanging out, hearing the word, and just being able to uh, come together, as obviously we know we haven't been able, been able to do this in a long time because of the pandemic. So take advantage and have some fun. Um, and do whatever it is that y'all do when you get together. Um, let's not forget that November 7th, we, uh, we fall back on our clocks. We got to, well, you don't really got to change your clock, but at least know it. Maybe some old people have regular clocks, but they're going to go, <laughs> they're going to go back an hour. So don't forget to change them. Um, so that way you're on time to church. Um, so yeah, that's on the seventh fall back an hour. Those of you that, you know, heard the message and were inspired or have questions or say, hey, you know, I want to receive Jesus. I want to receive the promises that he has for me. I want to know more about him. I want to know more about the promises and how do I function and how do I live my life and how, what does my journey look like? We have people that want to talk with you, pray with you, connect with you, and hopefully answer any questions that you may have. And if that's you this morning, um, you want to go out to your, when, you, when you're leaving the building to your left, uh, there is the new life room. There's some. There's about five doors there. You can walk in there. There will be some people there who will talk with you, who will share with you maybe their testimony, their story. But they, the the, la, the, the most thing we want to do is connect with you and say, hey, we're here for you. You hear a lot of us uh, hear us talking about family all the time. We are family here. So um, definitely, definitely, just make your way over there. Don't be shy. Don't be scared. We've all been there. We've all done it. And here we are today because of it. Um, also, if you're new to TC, if you're new, maybe this is your first or second time coming out, we definitely have a gift for you, and uh, that's because we want to let you know we appreciate you coming, and hopefully you make this your home church and you make us your family. Um, so if you go out the doors to the lobby to make a right and then another sharp right, uh, there will be somebody there with a gift bag uh, for you. So don't miss out on all these great events. We have all kinds of stuff going on, and it's for it's for you, and it's also for the community. So, you know, like the ladies' luncheon, invite some ladies. Invite other ladies, maybe who, who need to hear a word or who have been struggling our year or are struggling now. Invite them out as, as we celebrate. On Friday, I was, uh, I was blessed and honored to be an MC at a, at a quinceanera right here in, uh, in Fountain Valley. But in the middle of all that, I'm going to show you this picture. This is what happened in the middle of all that. Eddie and Nancy got engaged. She said yes. Where are you guys at? Stand up. Let's, let's applaud them because it's been a long journey because, Eddie, you're, you're really behind Peter and I, so you better, you better make that a quick one. So God bless you guys. Enjoy your Sunday, and we're going to close out with a song. Have a great one. Amen. Can you guys please stand up on your feet so we can finish today's service? Amen. Let's, let's end it with worship. Place to hide this weird song, his backbones, and I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond, and just when I ran out of road, I met a man. And he told me that I was not alone You picked me up, you turned me around You placed my feet on solid ground I thank the Master, I thank the Savior Because you healed my heart 
and change my name forever free i'm not the same i think the master i think the savior i think god 